Good afternoon and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, number uh, episode number 85, brought to you every Friday at 12.05 Eastern Time. I'm Anton and we have with us today a special guest, Hayden. Welcome. Uh, great to be back, Anton. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Um, you know, a lot of our tips are tips for people that use Apex, but today's tip is a tip for everyone, because even if you're not using Apex, you can use today's tip. Um, I like the sound of that. All right. So I'm going to right away, I'm going to just go ahead and share my sc screen and I'll kick off my timer and we'll, we'll keep people really to five minutes today. So today's tip is about having good representative data in your um, development environment. I think it's really important before you even start writing pages, once you have a data model, get a lot of data into your uh, data model. Um, for all kinds of reasons. But Hayden, do you do this? And, and how do you get data into your data model? Yeah, so the way I do it is um, not easy for everybody to achieve. Uh, my team actually uh, uh, moves data from prod into the dev environment. And that's great. Um, it's very complicated. Uh, it means that we have to solve PI concerns as we move data. And it also requires that we have representative data, which we don't always have. Like when we're launching a new table or a new feature, sometimes there is no prod data to use. Oh, yeah. And, and if you're doing a release 1.0 release, of course, there's, there's no data. There's no prod environment. I, I'm doing a release 1.0 in the application we're showing right here. And we anticipate having 100,000 records a, a week going in here, maybe more than that, potentially millions and millions of records. So we needed performance needed to be top of mind all the time. You can query on this. This has got to actually change really quickly, all of those kinds of things. Um, so with that said, we needed to make sure that this always gave us great performance. Um, and so um, no way I used the, yeah, I used Oracle Data Generator to do this. And one of the great advantages I, I ran into is because we had so much data in there, um, when we ended up dropping a column that we decided we didn't need, performance went down terribly and we, we caught it right away. And the reason was when we dropped the column, this composite index had that column in it. It got dropped and everything went, went terrible because it's a driving index. Um, a, so. a very relatable mistake, uh, but uh, a, a, a powerful testimony to the advantages of having representative data. Yeah, and I think having it before you even start writing your first screen is great because you build that screen and you've got data there. You can see what the screen is going to look like. It's huge. Um, so, um, I'm gonna... so, so now we're looking at my screen. Uh, do I still have, it, have you on time? I um, hope that I am still alive. Uh, so here um, on my screen, um, I am showing the, the data generator, which I navigate to from SQL Workshop, Utilities, come down here to data, data generator, and it takes me to this screen. Uh, from here, I can click Create Blueprint, and I'll show what it looks like when I use existing tables. Uh, so I've already um, narrowed in on these three related tables. Um, they have uh, parent-child relationships, and I'm going to call it a YT for YouTube. Um, this is related to a previous tip that we did, create blueprints. And here we see this screen where I'm able to interact with the model that it proposes to use to generate the data. So what immediately um, jumps out at me here is um, as I navigate through this, there are some things that I want to correct. And so this brings me to one of the advantages of using data generator. It'll actually prompt me to fix my data model. So it's saying here that it's proposing to put 5% blank rows in my video published at um, uh, column, which I know from uh, knowing the data that that's not correct. It should, it, it should um, be fully um, complete. And that exposes to me that in my data model, I should have made this column not null. Um, and so I, I have some data model fixes that are being um, made salient to me through this interface. And then uh, a, uh, so I, I, I can come through here and, and correct um, uh, this it, while I, and, and I'll parallel path that with also generating some scripts to, uh, uh, to fix the, the data model. Once I'm done, 
I can um, uh, generate the data and I'm given a choice between exporting it as a JSON file or inserting it into, um, or export, exporting it in, in, in a series of files or uh, inserting it directly into my tables. Uh, I'll, I'll highlight another advantage um, that has uh, proved very useful to me is in query refactoring. So if you are trying to dramatically rewrite a query such that um, you can't simply read the SQL and assert that they should return the same data, uh, the only uh, solution you have is to run the query against data. And you can't do that without good data. So you need lots of data, you need complicated data, and that, that only that will sufficiently prove that the refactoring was successful. Well, that looks great, Hayden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and that completes um, the, the three advantages that we wanted to list out for using, uh, um, for using data generators. So just to like start from the top again, it's keeping performance top of mind, um, second guessing your data model assumptions, um, and then thirdly, uh, refactoring queries in, uh, with representative and uh, uh, challenging data. Well, great. I don't know what happened on my end, but I do know that I lost my network connection, uh, connection entirely. Um, <laughs> so, so I'm currently hotspotted on my phone, uh, but uh, lucky me, I have that option. Uh, Hayden, I'm going to ask, did you mention um, Sandra's blog? No. So I would definitely highlight that because um, I was very grateful that you sent that to me. Um, it's an excellent blog. The, this uh blog post covers the features of Data Generator uh, really, really well. Uh, I definitely recommend everyone, uh, you know, click the link or, or go, to, go to this blog and, uh, and take a look. Um, I have a couple, I have a sec uh, section for, uh, you didn't hear it here, a new segment uh, for folks if they want to stick around. But if you really came in just for the five minutes, check out Data Generator and, you know, do all the things like and all the rest. Um, Hayden, uh, have you noticed a couple of things about Data Generator? Um, one is once you've added these tables, um, there's no way to reorder them. Um, if, you, um, if you share your screen again. Oh, can... oh I love this stuff, yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> so this is, you didn't hear it here. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, right. um, so um... Yeah, uh, it, it, these tables are in the correct order as it happens. Oh, you, you'll have to put my screen oh, back. Yeah, let me put it back on. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Um, so I have a I have a hard coded, uneditable sequence that determines that this this one will precedes this one, two hundred, and this one precedes this one, which is a sequence of three hundred. So I wouldn't know how to reorder these. Right, and it is important to get them in an order that makes sense because sometimes you need to reference the one above it if there's a foreign key relationship, or if you want to, um, if you want to actually use lookup data from one to another, you, you do have to get them in the right order. So, um, well, let's say um, that this order is incorrect, and uh, YT stats should in fact be before YT video. Right. So, how would we go about doing it? Well, uh, one way is you can actually export the blueprint, and you can manually tweak it and then you could re-import it. Um, that would be the supported way, but mm -hmm. no, that you could have heard here. You didn't hear it here. If you simply inspect that, that element uh, with your browser inspection tool, you're gonna see that it's listed as both read only and it has a, so read only is set to true and it has a class on it that indicates it's a read only item. So if you take off the read only true and you take off the class, that's the read-only class. Uh, yep, get rid of that. Now you can change it. So you can actually just go to the screen and change it, or you can change it here, whatever you might want to do. Um, and then you can save it. And there you go, you reordered it. Well, that is, um, that is my favorite kind of uh, unorthodox hack. Yeah, yeah, so you didn't hear it here. I'm gonna give one more um, small, uh, uh, <laughs> one more small little pointer on the uh, data generator. If you go to add another table to this blueprint, um, if you just right click on tables, add table, you can't do it based upon an existing table. And that's unfortunate. Um, you'd like to be able to base it on an existing table many times. Um, but there is a documented API 
Um, if you look in the, the API notes, it's Apex underscore DG data gen, I think, in, uh, if you go to here. And that will tell you how to add an existing table. So yeah, um, go to uh, data generator. Um, uh, maybe the search isn't so good, but if you go to apex.oracle.com slash API, um, I can get you there really quickly. Uh, so apex.oracle.com slash API. Um, on the left, go to uh, Apex DG data gen. So Apex underscore, yep, right there. And then add table is uh, right there. And then there's um, use existing table. So it's the third from the bottom parameter. If you set that to yes, or to Y, use existing table, it will actually read your table definition for your database add all the associated columns and add in additional tables. So Brilliant. two little bonus uh, tips on, on that one. All right, well, I didn't do much uh, during the tip today, Hayden. I'm glad there's two of us. <laughs> yes, uh, it, uh, I believe um, the same thing has happened to me in previous tips. So it's gonna happen eventually. The, the joys of, of doing it live. Um, well, now I have to watch the tip, so I have to see what, what happened. <laughs> all right. Well, everybody, have a great Friday, and uh, until next week, do all those things. Like, like subscribe, send your mom a letter about the show. Like, thanks. Bye bye.